Thank you so much for watching this online video tutorial. Like, comment, and share, as well as subscribe to our channel at Good Better Best Online Videos for more video content. All right, um, formal hello, grade nines, good evening, as the time suggests. Um, <clears throat> we're going to finish up from what we started um, last week. Last week we looked at safety with electricity, as I mentioned. Um, we looked at, of course, um, the parallel circuit safety practices, the overloading of a plug. We looked at, of course, some circuit breakers, uh, fuses, earth leakage systems, as well as a few safety devices. Okay. Just to, uh, uh, and then we end, obviously we looked at um, the plugs, the different plugs. Um, we got a, we have um, a normal three pin and a two pin plug. Okay, and of course we know the difference is that you know a three pin plug, um, they have a uh, earth wire or yeah an earth wire going through there. Um, two pin plugs of course do not, and in three in three pin plugs some of them have actually a fuse there. Okay. Um, of course, the neutral wire would be the blue wire, brown wire is the live wire, and of course, the um, earth is the green and yellow. Okay. <clears throat> Some three-pin plugs also have an added safety feature, which is that fuse, okay, which would be connected to the live wire. But two-pin plugs, they do not have the safety earth wire. Now, earth wire is obviously a safety wire. Um, two-pin plugs don't have that. They don't have earth in them, okay, only neutral and brown which is um, neutral and live. Now, some appliances, maybe some like hair dryers or uh, toasters, or I, I think I've only known toaster to do it, yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, not even a toaster, no, I don't think a toaster can have a two-pin, but maybe some flat irons, you know, for the ladies that like to straighten their hair. Um, appliances using two-pin plugs, they are usually specially insulated, so the earth wire is not necessary okay obviously if something's insulated electricity cannot flow through it okay so the plastics the rubbers etc that obviously insulates the appliance um, electrical sockets are made to accommodate mainly three pin plugs and then we obviously have an adapter that is required for two pin plugs now we do know this even in multi plugs there's a section for of course the two pin plug um, but even now the um, my flat screen TV that I have that's a two pin plug but I need a three pin plug adapter or a two pin two pin to three point plug adapter okay so obviously the three pin plug or two pin plug point adapter of course on one end to insert the two pin plug and on the other end is the three pin plug so that's the adapter so sometimes it's quite confusing to say it's a three pin plug adapter or it's a two pin plug adapter but i think two pin plug adapter makes most sense because it's adapter that converts your two pin plug of course into a three pin plug all right so that's essentially what it is now the title of our session for today uh, of course is the follow on from from that is the illegal connections to electricity main lines Okay, so what we will do also, we'll pull up an image. I'll first introduce the topic. We'll pull up an image to see. Um, we all probably have seen this, however, but of course, we know where does this mostly occur. It mostly occurs in our informal settlements. Okay, that's the nice term to give it though. Usually in South Africa, um, many of the informal settlements dwellers around the main urban areas, they of course don't have access to electricity. Like electricity makes lives more comfortable, of course. TV, couch, perfect. Okay, we can have the couch, but if we don't got electricity, we can't have TV, or we can have a TV and we can use it as a mirror because all we'll see is our reflection. But electricity, of course, makes lives a bit more comfortable. Okay, now, obviously those people that where illegal connections obviously occur is in the informal settlements, they don't have access to that as like us who live in the urban areas, of course. And the way that they resort to obviously um, getting electricity to the settlements is of course resorting to illegal connections, okay? And they use illegal connections to the uh, main suppliers of ESCOM, okay? So they leech, for a lack of better term, okay? They rather ride off or use, use electricity illegally, okay? 
All right, guys, what we got here is <clears throat> a little image. Of course, uh, looking at what I just explained of uh, illegal connections that are riding off ESCOM supply or mains supply and or the mains grid. So you can see there's a lot of wiring and look how um, messed up it looks. It just looks like a bunch of wires attached to whatever metal part they can find. And uh, let's just run this off and cool. Let's just run it all the way from our house all the way through. So this is how, it's just one picture, one example of how it looks. Of course, you could type in Google of illegal connections in South Africa and then you'll be able to see some more uh, graphics of how it looks so I do not physically until this point um, know um, how this obviously occurs like how people get the wires to look like it looks you know um, possibly they'll probably shut it down shut down the mains and then just connect and then put the mains back on again and then electricity extremely dangerous though any of these wires burn out of course that could cause major damage um of course fire um because lots of heat is obviously um associated with electricity as well so fire <clears throat> number one um number two of course um people obviously getting electrocuting or, or electrocuted and obviously dying of course not a, a nice thing or a fun thing uh, another example that maybe looks a bit better is we might have all seen something like this i'll zoom in slightly we, we see like this one electricity pole but multiple wires of course spread across to different homes okay just to ride off of course uh, this pole obviously be, uh, connected to the main supply and you see they're running off in like looks like a little tent setup you know we set up a tent and then of course these wires are just going across and spanning to different homes of course so extremely it's illegal and extremely dangerous of course here you got some more images of course um, of informal settlements of course and the power if you scroll down this is a more of a messier image of course and yeah as well uh, this I think is in Soweto uh, so not even in Cape Town uh, but extremely extremely dangerous of course um, this image which I'll just pull up here quickly I'm not sure if it's very big uh, even if I zoom in it's a bit blur but of course same thing <clears throat> all you see is wires connected from poles and just running off to different houses all right so example of these are these illegal connections appear okay so with those images of course happens in the informal settlements okay uh, a negative of this uh, from a financial perspective, of course, is that there are millions of rands that are lost due to this. Okay, uh, through electricity theft, uh, or that's what it's called, because if you are, are uh, you're actually stealing electricity by just connecting a little wire to the main and just running off, you are stealing electricity. Um, vandalized electricity meters and illegal connections do not only drive up the cost of electricity, okay? So one of the reasons why, if anybody has been asking, why is electricity so expensive in South Africa at this point in time, on the 13th of September, 2021, okay? Why is electricity so much? It's because this is a factor, not that this is the only reason, but this is a factor, okay? Because of electricity theft, which is as a result of these um, illegal connections, okay? So I'll put in brackets, illegal connections exactly what this is okay drives up costs of electricity for us I'm not going to get too political about it we'll stay far away from that cool another negative besides driving up the cost of electricity because now it comes got to cover its losses uh, besides doing that well um, they also kill people okay people also unfortunately die illegal um, connections stepping on a live wire touching a wire that they shouldn't touch this is particularly dangerous especially when it rains okay water electricity do not mix very well okay uh, over the over the years that this has been occurring a number of people have been electrocuted 
because of line of live wires that have been found in puddles of water so obviously a puddle of water you, sh you want to go splash in it as a child maybe or um, you don't think too much of it if you sometimes walk in a little puddle of water if you've got a good boot on a rain boot or whatever um, or maybe just if you're wearing shoes you know but because there was a live wire underneath it boom dead enough volts to kill you in a live wire okay so this it is extremely dangerous and this happens all the time in the informal settlements and it's quite sad there's nothing funny about it it's quite sad okay that this actually happens because of these illegal connections and because electricity is not provided to everybody um in south africa okay now one of the reasons why illegal connections should not be attempted okay is of the following okay what does electricity theft do okay electricity theft threatens life right as well as well-being of innocent people okay especially people that live around those areas okay now which of these people would obviously be most affected mostly children because what do children do? Especially in informal settlements, you'll find a lot of children are playing outside, running around, playing football, soccer, or whatever they can do. But they're outside a lot, they're not indoors. So they step on a live wire or something, they get electrocuted. So mostly children, young children, are victims of these little um, illegal connections as they are the ones who are mostly electrocuted. All right? I don't know if any one of us has actually driven through an, an informal settlement. I have had the privilege of doing it on more than one occasion to actually see what happens. It's, it's incredibly dangerous and incredibly sad. I've never seen anybody get electrocuted because of this, but it's incredibly dangerous and incredibly sad. Okay. What else does it um, affect? illegal connections what else does it affect okay first of all it makes it very difficult for escom to supply or to manage the supply i'm going to squeeze it in here i think i can to manage the supply and demand Okay, because the demand for electricity is obviously quite high, especially in urban areas, or possibly in informal settlements as well. Okay, but it finds it very difficult to obviously manage supply and demand. Okay, and that's why we obviously have such stuff such as power outages, or how we know it as load shedding. Let me write that a little bit better. Okay, so we have load shedding. Okay, and Power outages or load shedding, obviously, we know is an extremely pathetic, or not, maybe not use pathetic, maybe let me say. It's quite an ex extreme pain, all right, or it's extremely annoying, all right, for us to go through load shedding because it's an inconvenience, all right? It's an inconvenience. What is an inconvenience? Our time. So what happens if we had load shedding right now? We wouldn't be able to have this online class and be able to record the session because we've got load shedding and what does um, load shedding or power outages lead to on a large scale load shedding can often lead to a lot of job losses okay businesses are like you know what? we can't we can't actually function because we got we keep getting power outages so businesses close down businesses close down leads to job losses if people are not making money and there are people being laid off from jobs there's also such thing as price increases so things become more expensive because uh, during the time that there's load shedding people can't obviously purchase or shop or buy goods so stores try to cover costs and losses by increasing price for fewer units sold and but also if there's a price increase not everyone can afford it so no one's actually winning it ends up everything just falling through the floor or falling through the cracks the third and final point though is that um, 
there are actually obvious consequences for those caught and found guilty of electricity theft. Okay, now those people or culprits, those that actually are caught, okay, um, for the crime of electricity theft, okay, one of the obvious consequences, okay, that looks like an F there, you make that a T, is obviously prison sentences, okay, quite lengthy prison sentences, okay, prison sentences, um, <coughs> losing any assets, so a house is obviously an asset, okay, so example, losing your house, all right, anything that you deemed of value is lost for the results of the crime, of course, there's also such a thing as a serious um, loss of reputation. Okay, so if you are caught guilty of that and you had a job, your employers obviously um, trust you less, so you got a bad reputation now. So, of course, there's a serious loss of reputation for any business or company that's obviously associated with such crime. Okay, as well as if you are working for someone and you are called guilty of it, obviously a crime is a crime, no matter theft of what, but of course you also now have a bad reputation um, for it. And that's basically like the third and final point. So to go through those points again, um, illegal connections should not be attempted because of it threatens life and well-being of innocent victims, mostly children, who get electrocuted as a result of these things. Because children also just play with stuff and stuff that they shouldn't play with. Electricity theft also makes it difficult for our electricity supplier, which is ESCOM, to manage supply and demand of electricity, which leads to power outages or load shedding as we know it, and that obviously leads to price increases as well as job losses, and business shutdowns. And then of course, the consequences obviously is very lengthy prison time. Of course, you suffer a, the loss of um, serious assets or assets that you might own, or that the business might own and the business or company or even the individual then receives obviously a bad reputation um, with the, the government or the rulers of the land or ESCOM suppliers or with anybody for that matter of course it's usually hard to get uh, even uh, for any criminal activity once you come out or you served your time whatever it's hard to get back into uh, so it's hard to earn trust again of um, people and of businesses and stuff so some people find it hard to get jobs even afterwards because nobody wants to take that risk of employing someone that doesn't have a good rep or reputation okay i think that also makes sense and with that we wrap up this topic of safety with electricity grade nines thank you so much for joining me and we'll, we will continue with wrapping up the final topic of um this little energy section um, by next week. Thank you so much for joining me on this tutorial and we'll catch you in the next one.